Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. And those of you who follow this channel know that we've been looking into the problem of the Jezebel spirit that that is uh, problematic for many Christian women. And verily, uh, the first thing I want to say here is I am not exempt. So the things that I'm speaking here in no way are spoken to you in arrogance or pride. Rather, I'm trying to bring to you, bring to your attention things that are hindering your walk with Jesus Christ. And not only that, they're causing you much suffering and other people much suffering. So I don't delight at all. <laughs> Um, in pointing out things that that are hard for people to hear because I, I'm a, a sister just like you and, and I know how painful these things are and I know these reactions because these are things that I too have needed to learn about and overcome on a daily basis. And one thing I want to say is that when we are not willing to accept correction, that we might feel very victimized, we might feel very injured by someone pointing out something that is wrong in our heart, but verily, it's not loving for someone who sees that in you to be silent about it. When the, the Jezebel spirit gets corrected, often what will happen in the woman who's afflicted with this is she will feel unfairly attacked. She will feel a need to defend herself. And the way that she will do this is really important. I want to call people's attention to at least one way that the Jezebel spirit will induce a woman that she is afflicting. So I'm talking about a spirit here. I'm not talking about the sister. I'm talking about the spirit. This Jezebel spirit wants to continue to have dominion over the woman and over the people that she is influencing. So the Jezebel spirit, as I mentioned in previous videos, is hidden. It's masked. What the spirit will do is induce that woman when she hears correction to go around seeking to justify herself. And this self justification will manifest as accusation against the brethren. When we read about Jezebel in the Old Testament, one thing that is predominant in the spirit is that Jezebel was an accuser and she caused many of God's prophets to be killed. We don't want to allow this spirit to operate in us. And when we are corrected, when someone tells us that this spirit is operating in us, what we need to do is stop. We need to get on our knees and examine ourselves because yes, Things are being said that don't feel good. But rather than seek to defend oneself and thereby become an accuser of the brethren, what a sister in such a situation needs to do is she needs to get on her knees in prayer and ask God to examine her because God is merciful and kind and loving. And when we humble ourselves, then he blesses us. When we refuse to do that, though, what will happen is the situation will continue to worsen. So let's begin in the Word of God. I want to start in Hebrews chapter 12 today. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 12 and first let's begin here with... Um, Let's read in uh, verse 5 and, and onward. And ye, ha ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint 
when thou art rebuked of him. Verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son, scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So here we can see that every Christian sometimes is going to be chastised by the Lord and corrected. And the reason why this happens is the same reason that a loving parent corrects a child because we don't want our children to do things that cause them harm, that cause other people to be harmed. When our child behaves in a way that is harmful, we chastise them. And the reason why is we don't want our child to grow up to be a psychopath. The same thing is true of God. God is going to chastise us. And if we're in a condition of pride, of rebellion, of self-centeredness, of attention-seeking, of emotional manipulation, of trying to control people, that God is going to chastise this. Now, I don't think that any of us likes being chastised. I know I don't. And yet the Lord has had to chastise me and correct me on many occasions. What I would say is that if the videos that I have done recently about, uh, about the Jezebel spirit are causing you to feel injured and victimized and now you think that what you need to do is go around and get sympathy from people because you've been corrected, what I would say is you are continuing to do the very thing that is going to make you miserable. It's going to induce other people to not be particularly pleased with you. And so the, the Jezebel spirit feels very victimized when she's corrected and wants to retain her hold on the sister that she is afflicting. And therefore, she will rapidly move in the minute correction comes to induce that woman who's been corrected to fall back into the same thing that she's been doing that's, that was the reason for the correction. And the sister will go around to all kinds of people seeking sympathy and accusing, accusing the person who corrected her. And when we're considering Jezebel in the Old Testament, this is what Jezebel did. The prophets of God spoke against what Jezebel was doing. And therefore, she attacked them and accused them in multiple ways and even murdered them. When the Jezebel spirit is operating, we don't need, it's not helpful to fall into condemnation and, and then to think, oh, poor me, people are going to think this or that about me. Because verily, I'm going to tell you something, my sisters. Every single woman that I know of, including myself, has had to overcome or deal with this spirit on some level. So it's not a matter of someone accusing you of something bad. It's a matter of that the chastening of the Lord is for our good. And nobody enjoys it. If you're a parent and you have to chastise your child, you know that that's not something you enjoy. You would rather have your child not be doing things that are harmful. But verily, when we love our children, we have to correct them. And it's not that you're a victim if someone's pointed out that you're doing these kinds of things. It's that you need to heed the chastisement. Let's read on. Now let's go to verse 11 of Hebrews chapter 12. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous nevertheless, nevertheless afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Let's go now to Isaiah chapter 53 and read about the chastening of the Lord and the mercy of 
God. Let's go to Isaiah 53 and verse, let's start here with verse 4. This is a prophecy in the Old Testament about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. When a, a Christian, and because this channel is for Christian sisters, I'm addressing women, I'm addressing Christian women. When we are chastened of the Lord, we can know that we can turn to Jesus Christ because our peace, the peace in our heart, the peace in our life, we don't have to suffer for our iniquity. We, as Christians, women who have been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins, we can turn to the Savior. And the minute that we bend our knee and afflict our soul, admitting what we've done and confessing to the Lord that we see that we were wrong, the minute that we do that, we access the mercy and grace of God. However, I would say that if you're looking for mercy and grace and you're continuing in your rebellion and your your manipulation and your selfishness and, and your desire for attention, that you're not going to access mercy. You're going to continue to be chastised and you're going to continue to be suffering. Do I enjoy telling you that? No, but I'm telling you because the suffering that, that you're experiencing is something that you, only you, can change. So running around to other people, trying to get them to see that you, you don't deserve this correction, that the person who corrected you is unloving and unkind and, and mean and, and that various people and the body of Christ are all ganging up against you and thinking evil about you. When you do that, you need to stop because when I see that manifesting in a sister, what I see is that she is the one who is thinking evil of the brethren and accusing people, running around from house to house, accusing people. That is what's really happening and it needs to stop. If you continue in that, if you continue in that, you are not going to get the very thing that you want, which is peace of mind and a relationship with Jesus Christ. So let's go now to, um, let's go to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Pardon me, my sisters. As, as those of you who follow this channel know, I don't have an outline. I have a list of scriptures that the Lord led me to when I was praying about various situations. So James chapter 4, and let's begin in verse, um, let's begin into verse 8. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into heaviness. There's a lot of sisters who came out of the false church who think that because they're a Christian, they should always be feeling joy. And this is something that comes out of the false religion. It's something that clearly the Bible says otherwise. That we sometimes need to examine ourselves and accept correction, and correction and chastisement is not pleasant. And here we read in the book of James that we need to, we need to draw nigh to God and allow Him to wash us, allow God to correct us according to His Word. The only place that you're going to be able to find God is in His Word. So when you run around to other people looking for reassurance, for attention, for comfort, for guidance, and I, 
let me pause here and say I'm not saying at all that a Christian woman can't ask an earnest question. I am saying, however, that if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ yourself, then you're not, your questions won't be able to be answered because what you're looking for in the constant putting forth of dilemmas and problems to, to God's prophets and elders and teachers, when you're doing that, you're seeking from them what you should only be obtaining from the Lord. Attention, care, comfort, guidance, wisdom come first in our relationship with God in the Holy Bible. And when we refuse to do that, and we're running around looking to other people to provide for us that thing, we're in idolatry. And we're seeking from people things that they can't give us. And we might present it to them in a very flattering way. You know, it's very flattering when someone comes to me for guidance. It's very flattering. It makes me feel like, oh, I have something to offer. I'm valuable. And this also is a kind of manipulation. We want to be very careful as Christian sisters when we're presenting a question to first seek the Lord and not present our earnest question in an emotionally manipulative way in order to get everyone to attend to us. Because yesterday, or not yesterday, a couple of days ago, I mentioned that when we want attention all the time and people give it to us, that what we're really seeking is for people to serve us. And this is upside down, it's backwards. Women in the body of Christ are servants. And we don't exalt ourselves to make our needs and our emotions the biggest thing ever that everybody has to pay attention to. This is how Jezebel gets people to fall into her authority and the entire body of Christ can be corrupted with this. And I said this is a serious issue and I didn't say so to, to accuse anyone. I said it because we sometimes, all of us, myself included, need loving correction. So let's read on. Verse 10, James chapter 4, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Verse 11, Speak not evil of one another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Jezebel, likes to exalt herself as the moral judge of the hearts and minds of the people. And she accuses, she accuses God's people. So when Jezebel, the spirit, feels injured, she can, if she doesn't humble herself, a woman who's afflicted with this, if she refuses to humble herself in the, herself in the sight of God, she will then become an accuser. And she'll run around trying to defend herself by speaking evil of the brethren. And verily, my sisters, this should not be happening. And we all need, we all need, we all need to humble ourselves and realize that chastening is not pleasant. But when we're chastised, we can turn to Jesus Christ. Let's go to First John chapter one and let's begin in verse eight if we say that we have no sin if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he who god he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So people who are not dwelling in the word of God say that they haven't sinned. That, that's what happens when we're not dwelling in the word of God. And, and really, this is one of the major and primary messages that I try to set forth to Christian women on this channel that you cannot be 
a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ if you are not dwelling in his word. You cannot be a Christian if you are making your relationships with people more important than your relationship with Jesus Christ. And verily, when you start to suffer, I can testify of this. When I start to get withered and worn, when I start to get overburdened, when I stop being able to have peace, it's when I have turned away from following in the Word of God, Jesus Christ himself, and have fallen away from doing that, and I'm running around trying to, to uh, spin plates, as it were, trying to take care of everyone. When I do that, I have become, I have become someone who is away, from the word and away from God. And when I become withered, I know that I need to stop and seek the Lord. So the things that I'm telling you, my sisters, are things that I've had to learn myself. And I'm not telling anyone these things in order to, to wound them. What I would say, though, is that if you're in rebellion against the things that have been set forth on this channel, that what has been wounded here is your pride. And that if you continue in that, then what will happen is that the Lord will deal with you. Because when those who have been walking with the Lord for a while correct you, they don't enjoy that. They would rather not be in a situation where they need to correct someone. So when you run around and then are accusing people who have corrected you of being mean or or unfair or unkind or fa falsely accusing you. When you do that, what you have become is an accuser of the brethren. And if you die in that sin, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. So I say that to you because it's serious and because I love you. And those of you who have trouble hearing this and then choose to, to attack those who speak this word to you, th then all we can do then is pray for you because verily these things are not going to end up with you inheriting the kingdom and it doesn't matter you know a lot of defensive sisters might say things to me like yes but I'm doing this yes but I'm doing this I love the Lord well if you love the Lord you obey him and I'm not the Lord I'm not the Lord and verily, I'm not exalting myself as the Lord, and I'm not exalting myself as an authority over you. What I'm doing is I'm showing you what it is all sisters in Jesus Christ have to deal with and overcome. And from the word of God, what we can do when we recognize that this Jezebel spirit is operating in us. Now, finally, I want to go to Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 3. So Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations is right after the book that, of uh, Jeremiah. And, and the book of Lamentations is Lamentations of the prophet Jeremiah. And that's why it's there in the Bible. Let's read now in Lamentations chapter 3. And let's begin in verse 15. He hath, he hath caused the arrows of his quiver to enter in to my reins. This is talking about the chastisement of God. I was a derision to all my people and their song all the day. He hath filled me with bitterness. He hath made me drunken with wormwood. He hath also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He hath covered me with ashes. And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forgot prosperity. And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Does this sound familiar, my sisters? Have you ever felt this way? Verse 19, remembering mine affliction and my misery, 
the wormwood, and the gall. My soul hath them still in remembrance, and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. Therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Verse 25. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. A woman who's afflicted with the Jezebel spirit needs to stop and seek the Lord. It seems so simple. It seems so easy. But when we don't do it, the wormwood, the bitterness, the gall, the pain, the social isolation will continue. There's only one way out for anybody with any sin. And there is no sin that is better than another. When we see that we have the spirit attaching to us, then we need to seek the Lord and not seek other people to take care of us while we continue to be in rebellion. I pray this message is helpful to you in your Christian walk. And verily, a Christian sister who is in relationship with Jesus Christ every day in his word and in prayer, sometimes might have an earnest question, but she presents that question to someone in humility and grace, patiently waiting for their answer. She doesn't demand. She doesn't make herself the biggest thing that everyone has to pay attention to, you see? So it's, and please do not think that I'm saying that you can't ask me something you can't write to me if you're confused about something or or to another member of the body of christ because verily we can ask people things we can ask our husband something but when we do so we want to first seek the lord and make sure that we can't you know it's very likely that if we seek the lord our answer will come from the lord that's what happens for me Early in my walk, when I came to be a Christian, Brother Clinton, I had asked him a question. He says, well, I'm going to answer your question, and I'll show you in the Word of God. But verily, you can open the Word of God and get your question answered. And I took that to heart. So most of the time when I have a question, I don't need to run around to people. I can seek the Lord. When I become withered, when I become upset, when I can't sleep, when I'm distressed, when I'm feeling accused, then I can get on my knees and ask the Lord what's going on, and he will show me from his word. He will correct me from his word. And then I'm able, having humbled myself under the mighty hand of God, then I'm able to be a, a servant, a godly woman. We all need to do this, but especially those who are sisters need to walk in humility and grace with shamefacedness. Otherwise, we're not going to have any peace, and this is just the truth. Feel free to email me or comment in the comment section below. I remain here for you as your older sister and your servant in the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the word of God go forth today and edify many. In Jesus' name, amen.